What we have so far is information to that um, up to three people had entered the building and had opened fire on people inside of the building. Uh, we do have uh, some preliminary numbers of upwards of 14 people that are dead and upwards of 14 people that are injured. Uh, information that I think is probably the most reliable at this point is that the suspects uh, have fled uh, potentially in a dark colored SUV. We do not have any identification on who those suspects are. We do not know what the motive is for the shooting at this point. Sheriff. The FBI is here with our state and local partners as well as our partners from the ATF. At this point, I know one of your questions is going to be, is this a terrorist incident? I will tell you right now, we do not know if this is a terrorist incident. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to the Wednesday edition of the Steve Malzberg Show from our New York City studios. And that was the scene in San Bernardino, California, two hours at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, when they held their first press conference on the shooting that took place today in San Bernardino at an a, uh, inland regional center, which caters to mentally challenged adult individuals. Uh, reportedly, there was some kind of conference or Christmas party or holiday party going on within the conference room in one of the three buildings. Uh, up to three gunmen stormed that room for the most part. They said most of the uh, fatalities occurred in one area. We could assume it was the conference room. And uh, we now have uh, confirmed 14 dead and 17 injured. Now, since that press conference, since those remarks that you saw, that black SUV, or a dark SUV certainly, uh, has been disabled. There was a shootout between the police and at least one suspect. We have reports of at least one suspect down, possibly two suspects down, and there's a possible standoff ongoing with a third suspect. Joining us now from Washington is Bernard Carrick, former commissioner of the NYPD. And uh, Bernie, it's uh, two days in a row, and uh, I'm sorry that it's under these circumstances, but let's, let's start you know, at the beginning here. Uh, this appeared to be, well, I'll ask you what it appeared to be. You had three men, up to three men, uh, dressed in, some said, ski masks and in black with maybe a body armor. They came in to one specific building. They shot people in, mostly in one specific place, and then they escaped in a black SUV. They had long rifles, are the reports. What does that tell you? Well, the first thing it tells me is that there was an enormous amount of planning to get this accomplished, to get in there, do what they had to do, do what they wanted to do, what they intended to do, and they get in the vehicles and escape, get off the compound. And that's an, it's a huge facility. Um, they got off the compound, got out of the area, uh, only to be stopped later within the last 30 minutes or so. But um, whatever they intended to do, um, they did it, and there had to be a lot of planning um, to get them in and out of there in the manner that they did. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and, of course, uh, the, uh, the uh, FBI uh, representative there said, uh, we don't know if it's terrorism. He went on to say, at the very least, it's domestic terrorism. We, we, you know, he didn't know if it was international or not. Um, where we are now, let's get, now skip to the end. And, and what gets me, to be honest with you, and, and, and we are finding out now as we speak that uh, apparently this SUV was the one involved and, and that there is at least one suspect confirmed dead now. Why, with such intricate planning and, and, and you know, seemingly uh, 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 you know, well thought out and they had the getaway car and they got away at one point, stupid question, but why would they still be in that same getaway car? Well, we don't know exactly where they are, what vehicle they are, if it's the same vehicle. The reality is, Steve, it doesn't make any difference. Right. They were going to get caught. Um, you know, in today's world, uh, you can't travel, you know, a quarter of a mile without getting picked up on some cameras somewhere. Uh, if they didn't get them this evening, they would have got them, they would have found them by tomorrow morning. Uh, the reality is they were going to find them and they were going to bring them to justice. Um, fortunately for us, they found them earlier than later. Um, as I said, uh, within the last 30 minutes or so, they, they stopped the vehicle. Um, they have approached the vehicle. There's supposedly one dead. Uh, there's another person, uh, either dead or alive, in the vehicle. 
Uh, I watched some of the footage of the SWAT team and the uh, special operations personnel approach the vehicle. Um, and based on what I've seen, they have done a tremendous job at clearing, uh, clearing the vehicle. It's still in process, but time is on their side. They're going to be there for a while. Uh, they want to make sure there's no explosives in, in the vehicle. Nobody else is put in danger. And, um, and then, you know, they'll take it from there. And as we speak, police are saying there is still one uh, suspect possibly still on the loose. So they may be conducting door to door. Uh, but, but let me ask you also, you mentioned the, the SWAT team and, the, and, and what they were using. A lot of that equipment that they were using in pursuit uh, uh, while well, uh, engaged in the chase and finally the, the killing of at least one of the suspects, if not two, uh, a lot of that equipment is now kind of uh, in question as to the future of whether or not police will be able to hold on to that equipment because of the movement around the country to, to make police less militaristic, correct? You know what, Steve, and, and I, was, I was against that, uh, you know, the, the removal of a lot of this equipment uh, early on when it was talked about. You know, there are departments that don't need it. Um, but there are many departments that do, especially these major police departments, sheriff's departments, state, local authorities. Uh, the feds already have it. Um, this is a prime example of why you need, why departments need that sort of equipment. If you watch the clearance of that vehicle, um, you'll see uh, they use a Lenko Bearcat um, in the front of the vehicle. They used another armored uh, car, armored truck behind it. Um, they used a, a blast protective shield to get up next to it uh, so they could see inside, get a better view, uh, protect the special operations personnel that were going to approach the vehicle. Um, this is equipment that is needed in this day and age, given the enemies we face, and, and I think today is a prime example of why it's needed. If... Uh is there any good, I mean, no matter what we find out, Bernie, in, in, in your capacity, and then, you, of course, you were former interim uh, minister of the interior of Iraq, is there any good news that comes? In other words, is, is it better if this was um, a, a domestic attack, uh, an ISIS-inspired attack, a, a radical Islamic attack, or just none of the above? I mean, does it, would we as a nation breathe a sigh of relief no matter what it was? Um, the only reason we're going to breathe a sigh of relief in reality is that these guys are either captured or dead. Uh, that's it. Um, you know, it, 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 uh, my heart goes out to the family members, um, the people that were of the people that were killed, uh, the people that had to live through this. Whether it was domestic terror um, or international terrorism, in in my view, it's terrorism. When you mass murder, when you slaughter, you know, fifteen, twenty people. Um, injure you know another dozen it's uh, it's terrorism in my yep. eyes and whether you want to call it domestic or international doesn't make any difference Bernie thank you very much sir always great to talk to you thanks Steve Bernard Kerrig ladies and gentlemen All right, I want you to hear what Barack Obama said about this shooting uh, not too long ago uh, the one thing we do know is that uh, you know, we have a pattern now of, of mass shootings in this country that uh, has no parallel anywhere else in the world and there's some steps we could take not to eliminate every one of these mass shootings uh, but uh, to improve the odds that uh, they don't happen as frequently uh, common sense gun safety laws uh, stronger background checks you know, and you know for those who are concerned about terrorism uh, you know some may be aware of the fact that we have uh, a no-fly list where people can't get on planes but those same people who we don't allow to fly could got, go into a store right now in the United States and buy a firearm and there's nothing that we can do to stop them. All right ladies and gentlemen we're going to talk more about that with the panel. We're going to keep you up there. We're going to talk more about the shooting but in the next segment Republican political consultant the one and only Mary Madeline will join us. There was some news made on the political front. A new national poll is out. We'll talk to Mary about that and then we'll talk about guns in the U.S. and this horrific attack.